Hello everyone, this is Matt Gunlock from the 3G IQ podcast. In this episode, I sat down with Donnie Flo. I just wanted to do this forward bit uh, first. The audio quality wasn't the greatest. I do apologize for that. Um, my microphone was on the fritz. I decided to just do everything with the computer mic over Zoom. Like I said, it didn't come out the greatest of quality, but in my opinion, it's the information that matters. I do apologize, and I'll do better next time. But I hope you enjoy what you hear. Thanks. Give me a nod when you're ready. Junior's ready. Stand by. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 3G IQ podcast. I'm joined here today with Donnie Flo. He is the owner of Stage Zero Shooting Supply, and he is also the new owner of Tar Hill 3 Gun. Y'all also know him from he, he revived and renewed the Micro Am or the Microtech Pro Am 3 Gun Championship. So, Donnie, give us some background on yourself. Let uh, Tell the listeners who you are. All right. Well, uh, first off, happy birthday. Thank you. To Orange County and Drunkards. Um, so I guess the big thing for me is, uh, I, heck, I'm just telling a little bit about myself. Uh, I've, been, I've been shooting for about nine years, 10 years now. Um, started off, you know, uh, kind of testing the waters in USPSA, Steel Challenge, IDPA, shot a couple of st- <laughs> <laughs> shot a couple stages of IDPA and decided I would never, ever do that again. Um, you know, I, I love the, the shooting sport so much, especially three gun that I decided to open stage zero shooting supply in 2013. Um, I was actually in the hospital at Walter Reed. I just had, uh, some, uh, a surgery on my neck, replacing a couple of discs and, um, was sitting in the hotel room, looking up things and, and setting up accounts and, and everything the, the morning after my surgery. So, uh, been doing that for about eight years now, uh, growing it slowly and steady. You know, I'm still active duty military, been in for 26 years in February, um, total time, uh, married, uh, we are expecting a kid in February and by the time, but thank you. By the time that joker graduates high school, I'm going to be 61. Oh, so, (laughs) We'll see how well I'm moving along and getting along at that point in time. Um, but I, I guess that's me, you know, married, um, love the Lord, uh, follow, follow Jesus, uh, put him first, my, my family, my family right behind him. And, you know, everything else kind of comes second to support those two things. Yeah, and um, you and I met back in 2014. Um, I want to say the very first three gun it might have been the very second three gun match i ever shot at tar hill three gun um out near raleigh we were squatted together you were like my first exposure you told me about stage zero shooting supply and it's like stage zero shooting supply for those who don't know is a one-stop shop where you can get all your competition needs you know with true honesty and faith that you're going to be getting a solid product I appreciate it. I, I, I certainly try to um, try to make sure everybody gets what they not just necessarily what they want, but what they need the first time. Um, I won't repeat customers, not because I sold them the wrong thing the first time. I won't repeat customers because they got the right thing the first time and uh, and decided to come back. So it's kind of always a way I've uh, aimed the business and and strive to, to do things. No, we appreciate it. And you know, it's hard to find somewhere where you can just get exactly what you need and not have to go a million different places just to get it. And I'm, I'm constantly trying to add things and, and a new product and a wider selection, greater uh, variety 
of product for different guns. You know, I'm trying to move a little bit more into USPSA type stuff. So uh, always, always looking to, to grow the inventory and whatnot. Dog and wife just showed up, as I can tell. Wife just showed up talking about, talking about, I don't want fast food tonight. I was like, well, fine, I'll go get me something. And then she shows up with fast food. <laughs> and didn't even bring me a drink. Uh, tell you what. Hey, it's okay. She's pregnant. There's things going on. Yep. Amen. Don't encourage her. <laughs> I have to give it to somebody else because I get it all the time here. <laughs> I hear you. All right. But yeah, she's at home, so. So um, you just started, what, last year was the first the first time you ran the Microtech Pro-Am down at Clinton House. What got you wanting to get into that? Um, so running matches has always kind of been a part of the business plan for me with stage zero. Uh, I got started in it a little bit earlier than I was planning on. Um, now I'm still active duty and I got about four years till I retire. So my plan was about three years out to start doing it. Um, but I just, I decided to do it a little bit, a little bit earlier and go ahead and, and start building that aspect of the business and everything a bit earlier then uh, four to, you know, two to three years out and did it five years out. Mm -hmm. So the, the format itself, I always wanted to do the format, a, a, a true pro-am format where the pro gets to help coach, teach, mentor, you know, a shooter, the am shooter can be up there and just burning through two magazines of pistol and the, the pro partner can be like, holy crap, here's another magazine. Why are you missing so much? Slow down. Yeah. Hey, you're high. You're low. You know, they can, they can do anything and everything to help the am shooter except for load the gun for them, shoot the gun for them. Well, you know, I have to say this is the first time I ever shot a pro am for a format, you know, I never got to shoot the rock castle ones. And this was my first exposure to it, and, and I got to RO it. So I got to see it from so many different perspectives, from different pros coaching the amateurs. And you can see which ones are more comfortable and ha ha are seasoned in coaching individuals. And then you can see those who are learning. And everybody is learning at some point. You know, whether you're the person just watching there and watching the, the pro coach an amateur shooter, so the amateur shooter who is learning from different pros. And honestly, the way you did the match is you did it a true pro-am fashion where it's a shooter's match where you're not having to run 100 yards just to get to your targets. It's like, no, we are engaging targets and you are shooting those targets. There's nothing crazy about it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the pro am is a pretty straightforward, you know, we did a good round count about 175 rounds per gun. Um, there's not a ton of options in that. And I'm testing the waters each year to, to push a little bit further. Um, you know, we, ha we have about, I think last year, the first year we did it, we had like five or six brand new shooters. I think this year there were 10 brand new shooters. So um, like, ne and I mean, like, most of have never shot a three gun match yep. before. Like yeah. there were like five, or six shooters this year that never shot a three gun match before. So we're pushing a little bit at a time to see what we can get away with. Uh, the pro am is a little bit larger targets. Um, everything's a little bit more straightforward. We do the rifle on, on most of the stages at the very end. I think all but one this year had the rifle at the end of the stage. Mm -hmm. That way somebody didn't go to war with the targets at the beginning. And then, leave a whole bunch and be discouraged. Not to mention with doing a higher round count, it allowed us to reset all the targets. So by the time they got done shooting, then everything else was already reset. Uh, that helped the match flow a lot, um, helped things to move quickly and to, to stay on track and stay on target. I don't think we had anybody that was off schedule. We had, I think there may have been one squad that got a little bit behind on one day. Um, but they were completely caught back up. And I think that was because of a down target. Yeah. Uh, and had to fix that, that, that put it behind, but we had um, everything else ran, ran real smooth. And I, like I said, I always liked the idea of a, of a true pro-am format and it's a logistical nightmare trying to keep everybody happy. And how do you do the squads and people, once you 
create the the teams. Um, once you create the teams, people with drawing, and then you have to repair them with somebody else because somebody else comes in and, and registers because now there's a vacant slot, and uh, it, it can be <laughs> can be the match of above any others can be a bit frustrating to to put on. But in the long run, um, I think this year it, I was very happy with how it turned out. Still learned some stuff. Uh, things to improve upon and you know you're never going to run a perfect match it's just you're never going to run a perfect match you're never going to make everybody happy but that doesn't mean that you don't strive and learn from the things each year to, to make it better so like last year some of the things that I focused on I did well but they went so smoothly that I didn't pay attention to them this year right and then this year a couple of those things maybe didn't run as smoothly but the things that went wrong last year where I focused on this year those went smoothly. So it's a constant ironing out thing and, and, uh, and learning. And as we do more matches and everything this year, you know, we got the Tar Heel challenge and we're going to do a team challenge. Um, we'll just hopefully keep getting better and better and, and producing uh, a better product each time. Before we go into the Tar Heel challenge, uh, because I do want to talk about that. One, I will say, you know, one, you had a great team with you, you know, Sandra did a great job with stats and, and administration stuff. So, I mean, that was, that was beautiful. And then Chad, Chad Francis, you know, he provided the humor. He provided, you know, on, in the other podcast, I kind of described it. He's that like grumpy disgruntled first sergeant that I absolutely love. And I'm always kind of nervous around, but I can totally relate to it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're both awesome. Um, and they, they definitely help make things easier for me and, and reduce a lot of my stress. And um, I don't think, especially for the pro-am format and, and a, a lot of this is the same for the generation three gun match. Um, if people have never shot that Chad and Sandra both run that mm -hmm. Sandra does the stats and all the organizing and uh, Chad builds uh, the match and, and is the match director and runs it and everything. Um but, but both the Pro-Am and Generation 3 gun, they're about people shooting, you know, um, getting new people into the sports, getting juniors into the sports and, and things like that. So um, he does a great job of making sure people stay in the match. If you get disqualified at the Pro-Am or at Gen 3, you have earned it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Outside of that – is going to fight to keep you in in every way he he possibly can and that is absolutely the mentality that that i wanted for this match and he was just the perfect fit for range mastering the the pro-am oh yeah um and then again like i said sam just does a phenomenal job and the other thing i absolutely love about it is the confidence that's built in the individual shooter. You know, you have the amateur where you said some of these people have never shot a three gun match in their life. And it, one, it takes certain kind of ROs and I'm not patting myself. I'm talking about all the other ROs that were there, but it takes a certain type of RO to be comfortable with new shooters who have never done this. And help build that confidence because you know you're the guy there with the timer and it's like hey man you're good keep going like and then having that pro chime in and say hey do this do that here's more ammo and by the end of the stage you just see that smile on their face and you see a look of accomplishment that they did something and that's something you rarely ever get yeah and you know i'll tell you what when it comes to, to that I got more compliments, and I say I got – the ROs got more compliments that were passed on to me um, as a manner of uh, people saying that they had never seen an RO staff that were more consistent across the board on every stage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, had uh, one of the guys that run another major match that came in, he was like, I've, I've shot uh, – major matches all across the country. I run another major match. And these, this was the best group of ROs I've ever seen. Oh. This is the best road match I've ever been to. And he came in and told all the ROs that at the, at the end of the match. And, you know, and, and that meant a lot to me um, for y'all, for, for the people who committed the time. And, you know, there are people that have never ROed a match that have been shooting for a decade. And we got people there that they RO like Chris Wiseman, John Westbrook, Brian Demo, you know, John Westbrook Jr. All those, all those guys that they RO 
everything. We get to shoot and we get to go out and have a good time because those jokers are yep. everything. I don't care what anybody says. You do not shoot a better match when you are up. No. Your match is significantly diminished because you are the test dummy for the stages. Um, one of the things that we that I started doing this year that I'll do at all my matches is we had a separate RO prize table because when something got something was wrong or we needed to change it for the match, we had all y'all shoot it just the way it was. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, y'all all shot the exact same match, but we needed to make something different that was going to change the competitive equity of the match compared to the main match and the ROs. So y'all didn't get screwed on the prize table or anything else like that or where you finished or anything. We did two separate matches that way we could fix and address. Um, and I think that was one thing that we didn't do last year that I really liked that we did this year. And, I gotta, um, and to me, and I got to say on, on the prize table piece, like that was a solid prize table. You don't see prize tables that big too often these days. And you've done an amazing job with the marketing and getting sponsors on board to get the shooters something that you haven't seen since we'll, we'll call it 2016, 2017 era. Like that was a seriously deep price table. Uh, I'm, that's one thing that I definitely work at. Um, and I've got, I've got a lot to learn. I'm trying to do more original content for the sponsors, um, especially the ones that come on at the, the higher level and everything. Mm -hmm. um, the goal isn't to drive marketing. It's not to drive brand awareness of the of of the sponsors most of them are very well known you know vortex federal premium microtech knives um ballistic advantage i mean lead star I mean, there's too many to sit here and list right now on this but they don't need the advertisement um what we're supposed to be doing is yes marketing driving the name and helping promote them but also it's to help drive sales so one of the things that i'm really trying to focus on this year and, and moving forward and everything is turning Tar Heel 3 Gun into a bit more of a marketing and um, sales driving platform for our sponsors. You know, I want them to, to, to at the end of the day go, hey, we got our name out there um, some more and helped with the brand recognition and everything, but we know that he drove sales as well. Like we, people, you know, I talked about it at the, the shooters meeting and the, the opening and the closing, you know, when you're a shooter and you go to a match and you pick something off the prize table or you buy something from somebody that's, com that's uh, consistently sponsoring matches like Vortex, Federal, you know, um, MGM Targets. I mean, there's just too many lists. Ruger, all, all these people, um, when you buy something, it doesn't matter who you buy it from. But take a picture and be like, hey, I just got this. I want you to know part of the reason I bought this is because of all the, the support you give the shooting sports. Like, let them know, hey, I shot the Microtech Pro-Am, and y'all were a title sponsor, and freaking there were Vortex scopes everywhere. And I decided I wanted to have a Vortex scope. Hey, I bought it through Primary Arms. I bought the Primary Arms Red Dot. Whatever the case is, you know, make sure that those sponsors are aware that that you, you're, you're acknowledging their presence, their their support, what they give to the shooting sports and to three guy. Hey, I got to throw a shout out there too because at the pro am in Clinton House specifically, but a pro am Barrett sponsored the one mile challenge. Uh, you had Steve Epstein and uh, Mitch Mitch Cox out there helping run that stage. And where where else really can you go shoot one mile? And they provided the gun, they provided the ammo, and they provided the cool coins that are specifically numbered. And I remember hearing on the one episode of the Three Gun Show where, hey, you know, Chad Francis got 101 for 101st. So I had to do the same thing this year, and I had to get coin 32 because 3rd Battalion, 2nd Marines. <laughs> but I hear, yeah, actually, Chad ended up getting like 103, and I sent out an email. Um, away from him asking everybody who got 101 are you willing to trade and the guy was like hey I got it yeah I'll send it in and, and trade it out with you so I sent him another coin and he sent me back and got me the the 101st one for uh 101 for Chad yeah that's awesome 
So, no, but yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's you know a big part of it is just is is giving back to the sponsors. They give a lot to the sports, and we need to make sure that we're giving back, taking care of them, and showing that proper appreciation and, and gratitude and that for for these prize tables that we get put together and and whatnot. So Tar Heel Challenge, that's going, that is going in May, right? Yeah, May 13th to 15th, the weekend after Friday, Saturday, Sunday, after Mother's Day. So because if I'd have held it on Mother's Day, woo. Oh, you'd have a lot of angry spouses. Well, I'm, I might would have got cut with it being her first Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, when I think Star Hill, I think back to the old days where you have long stages, it's very technical, and you have long distance, and those long distance targets are a lot smaller than what you normally see. Yeah, so our goal for the challenge, um, it's going to be nine stages, three days. You'll shoot three stages a day, AM, PM format. Um, The reason we're doing that You know, a lot of people, when they shoot a three-day match, they want to be done at 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock on Sunday so they can have the prize table and get out of there. Um, But when – and that's fine when you're doing timeouts of 180 seconds, 120 seconds, you know, stuff like that. But the timeouts will be 240 seconds. Our goal is to create a match where um, every shooter is on the clock, the fastest shooter is on the clock for 100 minutes. 40 plus rounds, over 200 yards, smaller targets. You might be shooting at an eight inch at 300, 350 yards, a 10 inch at four, 420. We're going to have distances out to 700 yards. Um, These are not going to be short stages, you know, bay type stages. There'll be a couple stages in the bay, um, but it'll be like a triple bay (laughs) kind of thing that includes the shoot house. Um, we might use the, the 300 yard bay where you're going to shoot out the 300 yards and then you're going to move another 100, 150 yards up um, through a couple other different bays and, and some other shooting things that are over there on the 300 yard range. Um, we're going to get out to 700 yards. Uh, the goal is 650 to 700 rounds uh, total oh, um, for the match. So we're not going to say 220, 210, 200 plus for each gun because there's going to be um, options. You know, you're going to be able to do two rifle, two pistol, or a slug on paper. And there's there's going to be a lot of different um, things there. So you might shoot a strong shotgun shooter, might shoot 320 rounds of shotgun and only 150 rounds of pistol, you know. But the goal is 650 plus rounds for the match um, to include slugs sure. and everything. And then, um, the prize table will be on Sunday evening. We're going to do a barbecue dinner with it and everything as well. So everybody can hang out. They're not just sitting waiting at the end of the match for scores to post and stuff like that. They'll be able to sit, hang out, talk, interact with people, have a good time um, and enjoy uh, a good, good barbecue dinner. Um, Jeremy Swaffer is going to be coming back. He's going to be doing that. And I tell you what, like you're at the pro and you saw that barbecue dinner spread that he did on Saturday night. Oh, and yeah. I tell you what, that's Jerry Cobbler. Holy Boy, that was that was freaking good. That was some of the best, best blueberry cobbler I've ever had. Oh yeah, but I do have to tell you, uh, make a recommendation to Jeremy. Tell him to do his fried bologna sandwich with the egg on top. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, but he'll he'll be out there, you know, serving lunch and doing stuff the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I'll tell you what was super nice about that this year. Now, the first year when he came out there, he had only done like two events because of COVID. Like he bought his truck yep. and then um, couldn't do anything. So he was still kind of ironing out all the, the kinks and details. And because of that, he had well, long lines and stuff like that. And now he did a, um, a laminated thing where you could scan a, scan a QR code or whatever and place your order online as you got done with your last stage or as you were driving up to the range um, to shoot the afternoon and you could go ahead and place your order, pay for it, and then just roll up and pick it up. Um, And that was, I think that was phenomenal. That made a huge difference in how quickly people got food, um, how fresh everything was, gave him time to to cook everything and to to keep it on track. Oh yeah. No, he he did an amazing job out there. I, I, all the ROs were very appreciative. 
you know, I'm used to ROing a match and, oh, here's a, here, here's a sandwich. Okay, that's um, some ham with cheese and a lot of bread. All right. No, like, I couldn't, I didn't want to work after I ate because I needed to recover from all the food I just ate. Well, I tell you what, at the pro am, what we've done on the squatting matrix is we've allowed for six minute shooter to shooter versus normal five minute. Mm-hmm. So, well, we're starting at 7.30. Um, it should finish up morning squads about 12.15, mm-hmm. the way we're doing the squatting matrix, and the afternoon squad will start at 1. So hopefully, if everything goes smoothly, which you know how that can go, but hopefully everything goes smoothly, everybody finishes up in the morning at 12.15, 12.30, and it gives the ROs 30 minutes to actually sit down and eat. Oh, yeah. And then things are running a little bit late. We've got a 45-minute buffer um, so that the next squad isn't sitting there waiting on them for the afternoon to start and running over into. So hopefully that little bit of buffer gives our ROs time to, to enjoy their food or at least not scarf it down in between shooters and gives us a buffer in case things run over a little bit on the morning sessions. For the Tar Heel Challenge, have you uh, have you gotten a bunch of sponsors on board yet? Any title sponsors? We've got so I've, I've got a couple of people reaching out about the title sponsorship, and hopefully I'll have that um, locked in. Um, La uh, Lag Tactical has already come on board. Vortex has come on board. Um, I know Lester Arm said they're they're going to come on board. Um, there's a bunch of people that are already. I don't want to say who's looking at being the title sponsor yet. I'll wait till that actually gets locked in and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's already shaping up pretty good um i think it's going to be a a better prize table than what pro-am was okay uh as well so um i'm looking forward to it you know just keep working and doing things and trying to promote them and uh, promote the sponsors and build a good match and a lot of the sponsors have already responded like this is what we want to see shooters don't want to travel to shoot 125 rounds 150 rounds shooters want to travel to shoot yep and they're like that's what we want to see that's what three gun is it's long range you know kind of thing so um and there's there's a working on a, a thing with one of the ammo manufacturers um to lock in and guarantee ammo for all the matches that we do next year nice. um so working on that and trying to get that done because can't shoot it if you don't have it <laughs> no, you, you, you're right but you know everything you said is absolutely correct i you know i remember going to some locals up up this way and you know in 2020 and even early 2021 it's like why do we keep getting reduced ground counts like oh well lamb is hard to come by. i was like okay take a poll at the beginning of the match and say who wants to shoot a match with a normal to high round count I don't drive two and a half hours on a Saturday morning to come shoot 75 rounds per gun. I come to shoot 150 rounds per gun. And everybody else raised their hands. You know, I don't pay $40 to $50 a match just to shoot reduced rounds. I come up here to compete. Yeah, yeah and, and certainly nobody wants to fly across the country or drive 14, 16 hours to shoot, you know, 150 160 rounds a gun you know they're going to come you got to make it worth it you know if you're if you're coming and flying to the challenge you're coming because it's going to be 900 plus seconds on the clock it's going to be 650 to 700 rounds you're going to do long range you're going to have options you're going to get the shoot house uh one of the other things we're looking to bring back is a shoot off so we've got five divisions right um we're actually doing a carry optics division which is tack ops except it allows a slide ride dot on your slide ride optic on your pistol. Yep. No comp, no port of barrel or anything. Everything else is exactly the same as TAC Ops, but we'll have TAC Ops open, um, carry optics, heavy metal optics, and um, limited. But what we're going to do is we're going to pull 12 people out of the top finishers in each of those areas. Uh, the more that's in a division, the more people will pull from that. If limited only has five or six and heavy metal optics only has seven or eight, then we'll pull one top shooter from each of those and get the rest from the other divisions. And then we're going to pull 12 people random draw from the rest of the match. Nice. ROs, everybody. 
And we will probably do top one or top two ROs from there to add that 12. So, and then we'll do random draw from the rest of it. And then they'll shoot heads up the three gun shoot off type stage, a heads up race um, with the MGM target crossover plate and everything. Um, and we'll do like 250, 150 cash prize, 300, 200, whatever, something of that nature. And we'll do a cash prize uh, for the first and second place on that. No, that's awesome, man. And you, you mentioned the carry optics uh, division. And I remember seeing that and my guys saw it. And they're like, hey, guns, can we shoot this division? I was like, yeah, go right ahead. It, you know, like on, on the team, it's like we can't shoot open because we don't have the open guns. Like we're not going to get dissident arms. It, it offers no combat relevance to us. So we're not going to go out of our way to try and get that. I'm sorry, we just, we aren't. Um, you know, we could do limited but we don't want to do limited unless it's a deep pull. And, you know, I'm always going to do tech ops, you know, and my guys are like, can we, can we compete in carry optics? Yeah, man, absolutely. And it gives them an opportunity to shoot other divisions without people trying to, you know, guys on the team competing with other guys on the team. And it just allows us to spread the love. And I honestly, you know, I, just from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing is that I, I see more people starting to, like carry optics is a new tac ops yeah um you know carry optics is the fastest growing division in uspsa yeah um and it just kind of talked with with a bunch of other people you know dave hartman on history gun show did a, a whole thing on that and you got a bunch of guys who are like tac ops means put a dot on it no we'll we'll do carry optics and it allows for for both um, some people aren't blind yet and they don't need that red dot mm -hmm. or whatever. They can still track the sights just fine. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, some people just like shooting the red dot and, and, and whatnot, and then go a little bit quicker with it. Um, so they think, um, and, uh, you know, it, it's a growing division and allows somebody that's maybe a, a, a carry optic shooter in USPSA and maybe they want to get started in three gun but they don't want to take their dot off and, and have to switch over to a different gun and everything like that. So with it being the fastest growing division in USPSA, it makes sense to do one and three gun as well. Now I'm not going to have a carry optics division at the pro-am. Right. It's going to stay tack ops and open. And for the team challenge, it's probably going to be tack ops and open because there's it, you don't the team match is way too complicated. And you don't want to just saturate it with a bunch of different divisions. Keep it, keep it pure. Yeah, so we'll keep the keep the four heavy metal and limited um, heavy metal optics and limited will be in there as well, and then carry optics, tac ops, and open, like I said. And so, and I got I got to kind of agree. You know, at first I wasn't sure about the carry optics, but I see a lot of carryover being able to be made to where you can potentially get people from other sports like USPSA and introduce them to three gun if they haven't already been done so yeah and that's kind of kind of the hope kind of the 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 drive to doing it it's it's always about bringing new people into the sport um whether it's the shooting sports overall uh is always a good thing but particularly you know we want to drive three gun um, that's one of the things that that i love i mean i thoroughly enjoy shooting a good pistol match but not near as much as I enjoy shooting a good three gun match. No, you're absolutely right. Like just being able to have fun with all three guns, it's it's something you rarely experience. You know, when you're when you're on fire, you're on fire. And <laughs> you're just like, holy shit, that felt good. Yeah, I tell you, there's there's nothing more satisfying to me. Even I I'd rather hit and crush a good shotgun run than I would run one for one super fast on rifle. There's just something about hitting the loads and moving everything smooth on shotgun. Like shotguns an equalizer in three gun. Oh absolutely. Like you can kind of buy a good pistol shooter's a good rifle shooter, but that shotgun will make or break your match. Yeah. Um you know especially if you can't load it quickly and and get it back the gun back up and running and yeah so that shotgun makes a difference. It scares people off from three gun but Hey. That's how it is up here in, in Northern Virginia. You know, unfortunately, Virginia now does not have a three gun that I know of. Uh, Peacemakers, unfortunately, not hosting three gun anymore. You know, in order for me to do a three gun, I got to go up to Maryland, 
uh, Pennsylvania or down to North Carolina, which I'm, I, you know, I'm going to start making my way back to Carolina to get to the deer. Yeah, it's a lot for a day. Mm -hmm. But if you want a good match, if it's a good match, it's worth traveling to. That's what I think. Yeah. And that's the way Tar Hill 3 Gun always was, yeah. you know. I'm hoping to get it back. Um, I'm not I'm not going to run any monthly matches this year. Um, there's just not enough time with being active duty to, to take the time to be able to put together a monthly match and everything down at the Clinton House as well. So hopefully next year, um, or hopefully next year I'll start doing a quarterly match. And then as I get closer to retirement, I'll start to look into putting on the monthly matches. And it'll be the, the old kind of style monthly matches, you know? Yep. You came out and you shot 120, 125 rounds per gun at a monthly match during the summer because the days were longer. Oh, yeah. And you were there. You were there to shoot. That's the kind of thing that's worth driving a couple hours for, you know, stay Friday night, drive back Saturday after the match, or stay Saturday night oh. as well kind of thing. Yeah. Um uh, one of the other things I wanted to hit, um, and it was – you brought it up at Pro-Am, and, you know, it, and I commend you because not many matches. The only other match that I see takes care of all their ROs like you're, you're doing um, that I can think of right now. And, like, you know, uh, what's it called? Blue Ridge used to do is – you know, you take care of the ROs, you provide them the billeting. You know, the only other match currently that pays their ROs is Texas Three Gun Championship. Um, Aaron Hayes, he takes care of them. And that's something you mentioned that you're going to start doing to take care of the ROs. I mean, you help provide the food, you, you know, give them billeting, place to stay, and now you're going to look into paying them. And that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, you can't, you can't run a match without the ROs. Um, I can go out there and the guys that help me, Mike Sexton, John Westbrook, David Weatherford, uh, John Westbrook Jr., Don Bryce, and those guys come out and um, have helped put the, the match on the ground. They can come out and help me put the freaking best match in the country on the ground. It don't mean jack if you don't have ROs there to run it and to help move shooters through the stages and make sure everybody has a – fun safe time um so with that being said yeah we take care of the 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 building everybody stays at the clinton house on site so as you and your your buddies can attest that makes for a good time on saturday night when you don't have to drive to the hotel <laughs> you get on the golf cart the hotel falls off <laughs> and you drive back up to the building um but it's but yeah it's do logic it still did allow Wes to lose his keys. It did. Well, no, it didn't allow Wes to lose his keys. <laughs> Drunk Wes said, you know what? I'm going to do the responsible thing. I'm going to put them in my boots. Sober Wes was like, I don't know where the heck the keys went. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you know, the ROs get to come in on, on Tuesday. Walk their stages on Tuesday. The, the, the lodging is covered all the way through Sunday night if they want to get up and leave Monday morning. And then um, we, I provide lunch every day, um, even including during the staff shoot and everything like that. And then my goal is at the, the title challenge is to pay them each $100 cash. And then moving forward, I want to get up to $200 by the Pro-Am. Um, and if I can get it there, you know, I'd like to do $250. But um, $250, I get the prize table, the match fee, the lodging, and their lunch covered every day as well that they're there. Uh, so I'm doing everything I can to take care of them. Um, there's a lot of costs with starting to do some of this stuff and I'm not going to be borrowing tablets anymore. So buying all new tablets and timers and more steel and target tree and, and stuff like that. Uh, it puts, it takes some money <laughs> from the get go. So, yeah. um, as, as, as I get through some of those costs, I'll be able to take care of them, uh, a little bit better each time until I get to where I want to be. And they know that if they come to shoot, come to shoot an RO, a match for Tar Heel three gun, they know that they're, they're going to be taken care of. Well, I already know, like even before pro-am ended, my guys were like, Gunny, we want to come back and we want to RO this every single year. 
It was one like they they thought it was one of the most amazing experiences because they've been to a bunch of matches, but and I always try and get it. Okay, hey, we're gonna go or this match. And like last year, the first match we ever shot it was uh, it's summer season. It was the Mid Atlantic Three Gun Championship, and they got to RO it. And it was a good time, and they learned a lot. But you put on an entire event where that that's something that few of them actually experienced, and they saw how everything was, and they were like, "This is amazing." And they met so many people, and they 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 loved it, and they want to RO every year from here on out. Yeah, and you know, and that's really um, how I how I got my start. You know, there's a lot of people that. They go, well, I can't afford to, uh, to shoot. And if you can't afford to shoot, all right. Yeah. That's, it, I tell you, when I when I first started, um, and Trail 3-Gun, um, Charles Soule, when he was there and, and when he was at 3-Gun Nation, um, one thing that he did extremely well was take care of the ROs. Mm-hmm. Um, and 3-Gun Nation did as well. They took care of the ROs. And I was able to go to all the regionals, all the Tar Hill matches, I ROed everything, I ROed matches at, at other ranges or whatever, and not having to pay for a, a room, you know, up at Rock Castle or when I went to these regionals because I was working and and the mat and the the hotel was covered and stuff like that, and it helped cut down on my, my cost a lot, and it made made it possible for me to be able to RO or to shoot more matches. Not to mention. I got to know everybody. Oh yeah. You know, you got, you got to, you got to see things like, um, like Jerry on one of the stages, we had a, a, a target that was people were candy cane and loads. Yep. And, um, Jerry shot a steel target with a slug and hit the slug and put a nice little dent in it. And it was so bad at this match with people doing that. Um, I think we had like 18 or 19 pieces of steel that people had slugged with that. We were having, we made everybody sign them as they did it. That's all. And uh, Jerry, Jerry signed Kay's name to it. <laughs> <laughs> and name to it and was like, hey. <laughs> Pointing at it, took a picture of it, whatever. So, you, you know, you get to see everybody and talk to everybody and get to know everybody. And, um, and, and really that's part of what helped, helped me grow stage zero is because I, I saw everybody and and got to know everybody and talk to everybody and figured out what people liked and didn't like and what kind of gear they wanted. And um, I got to see what equipment worked and what equipment didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll tailor the, the, the items and the brands and manufacturers that I carried as well. So it, it was, it was just an all around win for me. And I think a lot of people don't realize how beneficial um, ROing can be to them. No, yeah. In the sport. I, I, and how it. It. And you know, one thing I learned is shooting three gun is not cheap, especially when you factor in traveling to all the big matches and everything. It just adds up. And, you know, people are aware I'm retiring next year. And it's like, I'm trying to be smart about, yes, I know you're jealous. He's clipping me off right now. But I'm trying to be smart about what matches I go to and, and what I do. Um, and so one of the things I'm going to do next year is I'm going to go RO the matches. That way I'm not spending out of my own pocket just yet because I don't know what my financial situation is going to be like as soon as I retire. Yeah. yeah. You'll be able to shoot all the matches. Like I said, you can come shoot all mine. So that's three matches right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I guarantee you I got a couple other ones that are going to be coming up um, with some other match directors that are going to be doing stuff in this area that they'll, They'll let you do it as well. I mean, you go from spending, you know, a traveling to hotel and stuff like that for my three matches, you go from spending several hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on where you're coming from, down to your cost of ammo yeah. and a couple meals. Yep. Yeah, you're like, so, at this point, I'll be spending gas, ammo, meals, a couple meals. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So if anybody's listening to this, and they want to help come RO the Tar Heel Challenge, shoot me a, a message on Facebook or drop me an email or something like that, and uh, we'll see what we can do about getting you down there to help. No, I appreciate that. Um, it's definitely nice whenever whenever the organizer, whenever the match does take care of the ROs. 
because it allows them to want to work harder for you. So, yeah, and I definitely, that's one thing that RROs have done. Um, I wore some of those guys out on stage, stage one. They had a nice little hundred yard jungle run with the rifle and it was slightly downhill the whole way. And then all the way back up that was, <laughs> every that shooter. Was Tony that was Alvarez and John Morgan on that stage. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, my buddy Dennis came down and, and, you know, that's the kind of people that you meet in three guy. Mm-hmm. So like my buddy Dennis, um, he came down, drove down, Every day he had to go back home to take care of his animals and stuff like that at night and drove down every day from Charlotte and helped our road. That's just an because That's he knew hours I knew. away. Yeah. And he drove down and back every night. Had a uh, Aaron, Aaron, um oh, why can I not remember Aaron's last name? But he did the same thing. Last year, Todd Van Langen and uh Kenny Reinhardt and John Harris did the same thing. They drove down, they stayed helped RO they didn't shoot the match they just came and helped RO um and that that's the kind of people that you meet in this sport the people that are willing to donate their time and 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 do it to see you the shooter have a good fun safe successful match Mm -hmm. so shouldn't go unnoticed no and it's not and I I love it I had it I have a great time every time I do it. By the end of the match, I'm like, oh, my God, it's finally over. But during the process, it's like, no, like I said earlier, it's all about seeing the satisfaction of the person that they accomplished something. Yeah, 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 I definitely, I love the the Pro-Am format. I've, I've been real, real happy with seeing how it's growing and the people that, or coming back and, and um, what they say they learn and stuff like that. And we're, we're trying to add more classes into it. Buddy Brown did a, a shotgun choke class, um, teaching a lot of the AMs about how to, to pattern their chokes and know when to shoot each choke and, and stuff like that. This year for uh, Pure Gold Shotgun Chokes, they sponsored the class. Last year, the AMU came out and did a two-day class for all the junior shooters um so trying to get stuff like that built up each time i want i want the pro-am to be like you said an event i want ams to be able to come out a day or two early take a class on rifle pistol shotgun chokes whatever kind of thing shoot the match have the dinner and the party on saturday night good prize table on sunday side stages raising money for foundations you know we raised a couple thousand for memorial this year 1300 for um, Battle Buddy 3-Gun. We raised some money for Generation 3-Gun. Um, so just, you know, like you said, a, a, a true event uh, where you get to know people and, and get to, to see and hang out with not just your friends and buddies, but other shooters as well. No, that's awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to it next year. Um, and I know I know all the guys on my team are just – they're, they're they had a blast. Like the two matches they talk about the most right now is Microtech Pro Am and Memorial Three Gun. I mean, they were just two very well ran events that they don't stop talking about. I'm glad to hear, it, man. I'm glad to, to to be in that company and uh, to hopefully be building that kind of reputation for for not building the reputation for Tar Heel 3-Gun, but maintaining and keeping the reputation because that's what it was known for back in the day. And um, that's my goal is to to keep that, to maintain that, to, to continue building that. No, you're doing a good job. Um, everybody I talk to is nothing but good things to say. Appreciate it. And, and I'm, I am I love hearing the good things. Make no mistake about it. You can hear the bad things sometimes <laughs> but, too, so you know you're yeah. true. Yeah. So me and me and Jason Byerly were talking about this earlier. And um, I love hearing the good things and, and what we're doing right, but can never make it better if you don't know what you're doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So constructive criticism is always appreciated, uh, taken into consideration and you know, there's some things that you're going to, that people are going to say, well, you should have done this, should have done that. And maybe there's a reason we do it the way we do it. Um, and it's a logistics thing or it's a timing thing or it's a match flow thing or whatever the case may be. Um, and, and we can't change it because of that. Like I said, you can't make anybody, ha- everybody happy. 
but maybe there's an idea that you have or something you saw as a shooter, as an RO that can help us uh, make it better, a better experience and a, a better match and event for everybody. So don't hesitate to tell me. No. Yeah. Hey, you guys heard it. Let them know the bad stuff. <laughs> Go easy on them. <laughs> Send us a <the> message. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Donnie, I, I do appreciate you coming on here. I, I do appreciate you uh, talking to me about this. And thank you for everything that you've done for, for the industry. Well, I, I appreciate it, man. And I, I appreciate the support. And I definitely appreciate you and the guys coming out helping RO. Um, the pro am definitely couldn't have done it without y'all. Um, and I appreciate, you know, the fact that you're, you're coming out and already committed to helping RO the challenge and, and everything as well. So I appreciate y'all. Thank you. And, and dude, anytime you want to do this, I'm, I'm game. I enjoy the, the heck out of it. Hell yeah. No, this is a good time. Well, until next time, and hopefully I'll see you next week at Fort Benning. There you go. That's where it's at. Row, row, row your boat. All right. Well, pedal downstream. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, thank you for listening. I appreciate it. And y'all have a good one.